there are many corporations while while we drove coming to the church i saw different business outfits some small some literally as if nothing is going on there and then some magnificent buildings and i thought to myself my god all of the people who own these things have the same frame the same brain the same everything the difference the kind and the quality of decisions that they made there are six destiny decisions that any individual who must rise and thrive in life you must be able to pass the test of making these six destiny decisions please i want you to pay attention and like the woman of god said with the intention to learn by the way let me define decisions please look up what does it mean to decide because there are many of us what we call decisions are not decisions there is a difference between a wish and a decision a wish is a desire right targeted towards a goal or an outcome in your life a decision is a desire to do something to achieve something that is backed up with the willingness to pay any price under god to see that that desire comes to pass the difference between a wish and decisions is commitment when you add commitment to desire it now becomes a decision so many people continue to wish for a great life others wish for an anoint i wish i would be as anointed as this man i wish i will be rich i wish i would have influence i wish i would study my bible every day i wish that my prayer life will come back to life i wish mere desires desire is important but not sufficient to produce any glorious destiny please you must learn this. the moment there is no commitment factor to desire it remains a week a decision is a desire that is backed up with the determination under god to see that whatever action you will take under god is taken to see that that dream becomes a reality are you seeing that most of the things that happen in our lives are just wishes many of you shop online and um when you shop online there is something called a wish list have you seen it nobody accuses you for leaving it there you can wish all kinds of things and laugh at yourself while you are dumping those things there i need this dining set three million you add it it's a wish remember remember it's a wish it keeps adding and then you watch it and leave it there and sometimes two years three years five years is there it's called a wish list but there is another column close to it where they can say is it check out and pay or pay and check out immediately you know you can buy now and then you buy now and check out and pay and then the order is ready to get to you many people have this psychological and spiritual wish lists and for many of us we've had it for decades strong desires in our hearts that are not backed up with the willingness to commit ourselves to bring it to pass and i pray that tonight as we examine these six decisions may it change our lives forever believe me if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you you will marvel and wonder at what happens in your life within one month of of understanding this and applying it number one the first decision that you must make in order to excel in life to live an uncommon life and an uncommon destiny is the decision to know the lord and to be exceptional in your spiritual life write it down please in order of priority the decision to know the lord and the decision to be exceptional as far as your spiritual life is concerned
Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Here's what the prophet said. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Did I get that right? Help me, I'm looking for the scripture. Let not the wise man, is it 12? Check for me, please. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Verse 12, thank you. No. Please search it for me. Huh? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Huh? Beautiful. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man, look up please, glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now 24. Let's read together. One, two, read 24. But let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Stop there. That the real glory of the believer in this kingdom is that you understand God and you know God. Do you know, we live in a world where if a young man comes and tells you, I'm a graduate, I had first class, but I hate Jesus Christ. I hate anything God, but I'm a serious person. You say, that's all right. At least you are educated. It's just that you are not serious with God. And we sweep it under the carpet. We have downplayed the issue of spirituality and left it to church and pastors. The Bible says, listen carefully that let not the wise man glory in his strength, the rich man and all of that, that him that glories, he should glory in the fact that he knows the Lord. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying and here's what he said. John 17 and verse 3. He says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many believers who love the fruits of a healthy relationship with Jesus, but are not willing to commit themselves in truth. There are people who have made up their minds that they will not be serious with God. In fact, they frown at anything that drives them into a deeper relationship. The moment you mention fasting, they frown. Prayer, five minutes, they say it's enough. God is not deaf. You see, all these kinds of things are the indices that make for a weak and beggarly spiritual life. And it is dangerous because you raise your children spiritually to honor your conviction of God. If you do not respect God and God does not seem like a big deal to you, it is impossible to raise a mighty man under God being a lazy man spiritually yourself. Are we together? You will only raise your children to reflect your convictions about God. Every arm robber came from a family. Is that true? Every terrorist and every troublemaker disturbing society today came from a family. And respectfully speaking, most of them, the disaster in a nation starts within a region. The disaster within a region starts within a family. The disaster within a family starts within an individual who neglected his role. Chances are excellent that if you do not show your child the way of the Lord, the devil will escort him to another group of careless individuals and they will build that strong momentum and he will begin to grow and evolve until he becomes one who will cause mayhem to society. Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. And every family problem, most family problems are traceable to the neglect of someone. The decision to know the Lord and to be serious spiritually. During the pandemic last year, most all churches, I think, there was a compulsory, how many months? Two or three months break. Do you know that two or three months break 
there were people who by the time they called back they needed to dig them from a spiritual hole and bring them out to say start with god afresh because just three months of lack of pastoral assistance plunge many people into a realm that is almost as if they never knew jesus christ three months remember the disciples when they walked with jesus we will follow you they said jesus kept looking at them especially peter as soon as judas came to kiss jesus he landed in trouble you see how they all left the only person that stood with jesus at the cross was john the beloved where were all the people who enjoyed his meal the recipients of his miracle the five loaves and two fish where were the people he healed Listen to me. If you want to live a life of excellence spiritually, you must commit yourself to loving the Lord. There are many people who open their Bibles on Sundays and they don't open it again till another Sunday. Prayer, except it is emergency. Otherwise, God, let your message just speak. This is the year that you will make up your mind to be systemic about your spiritual growth most of us grew up and saw our parents some of them were not filled with the holy ghost they could not pray in tongues but as soon as they woke up the first thing their bibles were at their side is that true you saw that happen that ritual for over 25 years it may be 10 minutes of devotion but they, it did not fail we must return back and discipline ourselves to take the issue of our spiritual life seriously when someone is not spiritual as an individual when he becomes a worker in church he will transfer his own seriousness spiritually to that department it's as simple and honest as that is that true if an unserious man meets an unserious woman even if they are joined in church they will all take their different versions of spiritual unseriousness and that that home will be it will be a hub for demons and yokes and curses and all kinds of things and many of us sincerely speaking we come from backgrounds not to scare you but by default there are already yokes and covenants waiting for your unseriousness to play out god is your destiny and that of your children is at the mercy of your spiritual growth listen you run based on what is pursuing you if a fowl is pursuing you, can a chicken is pursuing me, I can run. But if a lion is pursuing you, there are many of us, you are yet to examine what is really pursuing you. You heard that your grandfather served idols and died. Your grandmother served idols and died. And they said the first male, which is you, should be the person who will be the next priest. Now you said it's not my business. And you see what your life is becoming. It takes high level spirituality to break free in experience from those things. Please take serious what I'm telling you. There are people, there is no explanation to their failure except that there are yokes of darkness that try to tie them down. The decision to be spiritual. What happens as a father when your child tells you, I had a dream, I've been seeing dreams of graves. He said, that's all right. He's, I think you are watching a bad movie. You see that? Whereas this child is communicating something. Imagine if Samuel were not spiritual. If Eli were not spiritual. Yes, even though his eyes were getting dim, he was discerning enough. When Samuel came and met him and said, there is, a, there is something happening to me. I'm hearing your voice. He said, uh-huh. You mentor based on your growth. You lead based on your growth. Let me challenge especially the gentlemen in this church and the men in this church. Your family will be a reflection of the level of spiritual dexterity you have or otherwise. No matter what else you have, if it is minus God, you're on your way to disaster. The decision to know God and to be serious spiritually. A woman once reported her husband that he never calls for prayer they tried in the morning it didn't work they tried in the night it didn't work but anytime there's trouble he can call anybody anytime even in the afternoon and gather the whole family and say they must pray i 
I don't know about you, but I am where I am today by the grace and the mercy of God. I would rather lose every other thing but not his presence. We live in a wicked world. When you leave Jesus Christ, you will find out that every other thing you've held on to is transient. Men will leave you in a heartbeat. Systems will leave you in a heartbeat. Your job will throw you out if they have an alternative. You better hold on to that friend that's ticket closer than a brother. Don't let men make Jesus Christ look like an outdated issue in your life. Your phone rings with a Christian song. You quickly off it because you don't want to fall your hand. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I truly believe there are people here and outside and those following you're saying apostle this jesus thing bah, i i want to try it's not about trying it's about genuinely submitting yourself to see the value listen if i ask you sit down here sir and i don't tell you why even when you are tired you are not motivated to keep sitting but if i tell you there is a lion close to you and your safety is to sit down there your body cannot tell you you are tired. The revelation of what is behind you. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says the righteous run it to it and they are saved. My dear people, our world is a wicked world. Don't say I'm a celebrity. Everybody loves me. Get into a situation where you need help. That's when you will understand, you will understand the, the, the self-centeredness of men. There is one who can love you just as you are. Jesus. The decision to know God. It means the decision to study your Bible. You get too big to study your Bible or too busy to study your Bible, you're in trouble. It's an attack. Too busy to pray. Too busy to learn the ways of God. Your pastor would teach and the Holy Spirit will tell you, you need to listen to that message. In that message is the security of the next five years of your life. But then the devil occupies us with all kinds of things. Hear me. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. When I started out in life and ministry, there were people who were running. You would think after one year, they would not give room for ministry again. Sometimes I, I challenged a few of them and I said, calm down. The way you are going about ministry, you will fail. You don't understand. This is how this thing is done. Some of them today, I'm not sure they are even in Christ. Sincerely. You see, Ba, when you walk with God, your life looks deceptively slow. Keep moving with him. God does not rush people. He gives speed. There is a difference between speed and hurry. God builds you for a long time. You will, you will look at yourself using the indices of men and feel stupid for being serious with God. I've been a worker in this church for four years. Lord, it looks like nothing is happening. Yet you did not know that in prophecy 2022 was the year that God will lift you all of a sudden. And this is what people will say, where did he come from? There is nobody who comes from nowhere. Just because you are not there during the time of training does not mean the person was not trained. There are many of you I sense in my spirit that you have committed your heart to serve God. You have served in this church. People have laughed at you. You've even felt stupid serving God. I came here to prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus who sent me. I decree unto you, may this be your season of appearance. Your life will be a testament that it pays to serve Jesus. Please sit down. The decision to know the Lord and the decision to excel spiritually.
the first speak the first index for measuring growth and and um, a life of meaning from scripture is the health of your spiritual life hallelujah praise the name of the lord the health of your spiritual life number two i'm seeing something i saw yesterday while i was preaching at the mainland I saw yesterday I prophesied it and the Lord is telling me to speak it here too. The Lord told me that there was a, a lady or someone yesterday, her mother has been praying because of what God showed her, the mother at birth, that that person was going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of the Lord. And the Lord is asking me to declare that same word. I just saw light and there are people God is going to begin to walk on you. Listen. There is a training in the spirit. What God is making out of you, even you, you do not know. You think that you are just an ordinary person who is rising, but there is a dealing. It's why God has been exempting you from what others are enjoying. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, by reason of this encounter tonight, may the grace for your destiny the grace that has been building you in the secret when no one has seen the grace that has prohibited you when you should travel it says stay when others are moving it says stay you don't even understand where god is going with you i'm interpreting prophecy for you you are not wasting your time there is a making you have decided to walk with god When you walk with God, your life is very strange. Read John 15. Jesus was speaking. He said, the wind bloweth. You can't tell where it's going or where it's coming. I don't know one person who has really walked with God and understood everything about the journey. It is not the God of the Bible. There will be gaps in your walk with God. The mission is follow me. It will take faith. God will not tell you everything and everywhere. Just follow. Follow. Be stupid enough to follow. Some of us have gotten here today by the privilege of blind followership. Lord, I don't know where I'm going, but I know that every time my heart is overwhelmed, ah, I will be still and know you, my God. My soul be still and know you. That I will be still My soul be still know you, my God. That, that life from state. You're serving God that is responsible for where you are. Can I tell you this? We live in a society that finds joy in mocking God. They will look at you and say, look at your life. Be honest with yourself. And you stand in front of a mirror and say, God, look what you've made out of my life. You've made misery out of my life. I had a useful life. I had a good job. When I was an unbeliever, I was fine. Now you brought me to this church and all I can say is I'm a worker. Hold on. There is something he's doing. I can tell you, there is something he's doing. When God is done with you, like a trophy, when he lifts you to the nations, if you ever forget this man, Look at the life of the person talking with you. I will be still. See, when God lifts you, there is nothing man can do. You are lifted, you are lifted. It's as simple as that. Hear me. I'm speaking because maybe there is a man of God here in the making. And you are wondering, God, this is our thing. I don't, um, you are asking me to pray. You are asking me to fast. Where are we going? And God says, just continue. What do I do with these prophetic things I'm seeing? Just continue the training. Oh, Esther, continue. There is the palace calling you. 
but God will not tell you you are going to the palace he will train you some of you God has refused to tell you where he's taking you so that you will not be distracted just focus on the training but I can assure you that the thoughts that he thinks towards you they are thought of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end my soul be still and know you are God I will be still and know you Please sit down. Can you imagine that they are, just help those under the anointing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elizabeth, do not cry about your lack of pregnancy. John is coming. John is not an ordinary child. John is a unique prophet. When you know this, let me teach you something, people of God. You will never judge people by what they are going through. You do not know the kind of dealing God is submitting them through. So you find out someone gets married and no child day one, no child two years. Don't be quick to point fingers. You do not know what God is taking away from their life before that child arrives. Hmm. Has God spoken to someone already? You must make up your mind. Don't say I'm in Lagos, I'm busy. Don't say I have five children. In the beginning, God, restore that protocol to your life. Not in the beginning, a job. The person talking to you is not stupid. I know that you need resources to move. I know you have children. Hey, anything God does not give you, let no man claim he can give you. Please. One uncle can say, meet me by February. And you would die by the end of January. For someone, God is waking you right now. He's saying the way you are ignoring God, you are, you are programming yourself and your children to disaster. Apostle, but I'm a worker. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you if you're a worker. Many people were close to Jesus. Some made money out of him. Some used him for influence. Only a few were changed by that relationship. Your proximity around where God is does not mean you are transformed. Years ago, the Lord told me something. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And I stand before the God of heaven to tell you, if there is anything you have seen, that is worth giving God glory in the life of this man. It is a product of what God can do when he finds men who give him everything. Everything. You don't give God your money and keep your brain. You give everything. You're my treasure, my priority. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty, O oh, morning star, you truly are. Pastor Mildred, when I started my walk with God, I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for fame. I didn't even come from a background that would easily give me that kind of result. I loved him with my heart and my all. I would give up ministry a thousand times to maintain that relationship. Apostle nonsense. Preacher nonsense. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence, I love, I love, I love you Jesus, I love, I love. I'm staying here because God is doing something in the life of someone that after this conference and this night, you are going to make up your mind and say that's it that is it that is it it is oh i am ready 
I am ready to walk with Jesus genuinely. Whoever told you he will make you a failure? Whoever told you that when you serve him, you will, you will sweep the floors of life? You don't know him. Find out from scripture. He carried an ordinary lady called Hasdasa and made her queen. Find out what he made with ordinary people. I have made up my mind that my everything belongs to him. It is true. My charge for you, we have six wherever I stop. I need to drum this because sincerely for most people, this is why you are not excelling. We live in a sociological context that makes God look like an interruption to civilization. Lord, I want to make it. Are you not aware? Huh. When people clap and credit their results to their efforts, other people like us back down and we say, Lord, I will be foolish and stupid to join them lifting my hands. No. My life is a testament of what God can do where God can take another person's prayer point and give the one he loves. Learn what I'm sharing with you today. You are a man of God. Yeah, forget about ministry and settle down with God. Businessman is not just by running up and down. Believe me, the person talking to you is not stupid. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of his wings. Please take God seriously. Anybody who comes around your life wanting your hand in marriage or wanting anything and is not serious with God, there is nothing to pray about. The prayer is already answered. Are we together? Straight to the point. But I can tell you, if it is the God of heaven, give him your everything and watch what he does with your life.